let's go through how to back up your movie and TV um, libraries or music libraries even. Um, if we have a look here you can see I've got a TV show library and there's a extensive movie library there um, that I've just scanned in with a load of test files that I uh, found on the internet. Um, so as you can see there, what's that? 1,811 items in that library. Uh, I think the TV show is considerably smaller. Yeah, we've just got these couple of things here. Now, if you want to back that up, um, you can do. Um, there's a built-in function in Kodi, which uh, which has been there for a very long time, uh, which will allow you to back up. But it can be a little confusing because um, there are a couple of options so let's just go through what the options are so if you head into system and video and we need to be in expert mode there we go now go up to the library section and you will see that we've got here the option to export video library and obviously there's import video library as well now export video library it's going to give you two options so that's it's basically going to save all your um, all your details for you and your database and everything like that um, and let's see how what the options are so if we click on it we've got the option to have separate or single file and it's not very clear what that does uh, so I'll just quickly explain it a separate uh, the, sep the separate option is that will um, that will search through every one of your local files so somewhere on your system um, even if you use online content um, you know like a through an add-on um, even if you use online content for your library you would have had to have had added that source um, to scan it into your library so um, somewhere on your device will contain the um, the links to all of the uh, individual files, the individual movies and TV shows. Um, so they're basically spoofing the system into thinking that you actually have that content stored locally. That's how they work. Um, now what this will do, it will go to each one of those folders and it will add all the relevant artwork, it will download it and place it in those folders um, for those particular movies, TV shows or, or whatever you have. Um, so that's actually really useful, but it will use up a lot of um, room on your device. However, it is quite a good idea because it's um, if you're going to share a library um, amongst multiple devices, then you know that it, that can be quite a useful uh, useful thing to do because obviously you've only got the um, uh, the artwork stored locally on one machine, and it hasn't got to scrape online and take forever to get all the artwork every time. Um, single file that will stick everything into one um, one sort of zip file type thing basically um, and then you can then import that back again um, it basically uh, keeps all the sort of thumbnails and things like that sticks it in one little file and um, and then you just import that one file um, so what I'm going to do in this example is um, I'll try the single file method so I'm going to click on that and you just tell it where you want to export it to. So I'm just going to put it in. Um, oops, sorry. I'm going to put it in my H drive, and um, I'm going to create. Oh, I'm going to create a new folder called Backup Library. So if I put it in there, click OK we're going to see this export in the library. Now obviously this could take quite some time because there's um, you know there's quite a lot of uh, content there. Um, on certain machines I've seen that it does appear to have frozen at times. Don't worry about that too much. It it's just um, it's just that the system you've got running isn't particularly uh, great at uh, file management. So uh, just be patient, and um, you know, give it an hour or or so, depending on the speed of your device, and uh, and it should be all good. So I'm just going to pause that now, and we'll come back to that in a sec. 
Right, now that's done, um, I just want to show you what that uh, that file looks like. Um, so I'm going to head over to that backup library location. There we go. And so we've got this folder here. If we click in there, we've got the database file. Um, I'll go into that in a second. Then we've got the TV shows. You can go in there. It's got all the artwork, all the thumbnails. Um, there you go. And music videos, I've got nothing in there. Movies. And you've got the same thing there. You've got your, um, all your artwork. So, and then obviously you've got your actors as well. Um, now what this is going to do is if you import this file, now this is the, uh, the problem with using this method, uh, that database file there, it will import that as well. So it will import your actual library. It's great if you're using the same machine if you just want to back it up for for backup purposes just for that particular machine fantastic but if you wanted to import it to another machine you're going to run into issues um, because that database file would be pointing to presumably local files the only way around this if you want to use this method is make sure when you add your source um, when you're scanning your library in make sure you add it as a share on the network so even if it's on your local system so for example um, I've added a source of H um, movies or something along those lines what I would do if I wanted to make it universal is I would create that as a share so that every um, every system on my network can see it so in Windows I'd share that folder um, and I'd add the um, when adding the uh, the content initially I'd add it as uh, SMB SM, uh, Samba share and point to that location and then obviously every device would be able to find the uh, the video files um, if they're pointing to H movies it's going to obviously be looking on the whatever device it is that I'm using, let's say for example an Android device in another room, it's going to be looking on that Android device for H movies, which clearly it's not going to exist, so um, so it's not going to work. Um, so that's that method explained. Um, I'm going to go back to Kodi now, and in the library section here, if we were to do import library, if you did want to import that, it is dead simple. You just click on import library, navigate to wherever it is, so backup library, I would click on that. I would then click on this here, the XBMC video DB, and it's got the date, and then click OK. Now I'm not going to do that because the reason being it takes forever. Um, and don't be um, don't be fooled into thinking the system's crashed. It won't have it. It's just very very slow, and and there's quite often absolutely no indication that anything's happening in the background either. So you have to be very very patient. And and this is on a fast Windows machine. So on other devices, it can take. Well, I've known it take well over 12 hours to import before. Um, and like I say with no indication of whether or not it's working but it eventually did work um, so patience is the key on that one now the simpler method is to do the uh, export video library as separate so let's see what happens with that um, export thumbnails and fan art yes export actor thumbs yes I'm going to do that as well um, these are obviously all optional overwrite old files yes well I don't have any old files there so I'm just going to let that do that um, right I'm just going to pause that I'm going to pause that for a second okay that's uh, that's finished the export um, function now so um, let's just show you what's happened so if we go back over to here let's find my movies test files now if you've watched my previous guide on the naming convention for setting up uh, your file names properly and folders, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of this uh, this structure here. So this particular one, I've stuck all the movie files into one folder. I mean, this just hurts my eyes looking at it. 
Now that's one of the reasons why I really, really don't like putting everything just in one folder, not in subfolders. As you can see, we've got our video file, a video file, then we've got an NFO file, which contains all the information about that particular episode. So uh, Cody can use that to, um, they can scrape against that rather than scraping online, and it will uh, tell it to use that thumbnail, uh, that fan art, and that thumbnail which is also added okay so you know you've got loads loads of things in there and then you've obviously got your actors directory there as well um, if we have a look at um, let's try the TV with subfolders you'll be able to see it's a little better organized you can go into um, castle and you've, you've got your season posters things like that and then you've got your things in here so that's a little bit better um, for movies, let me go back. I think I've got a folder called movies here. Here we go. And you, as you can see here, now this is much better. It's much easier to read. I've got everything in a subfolder. And then in each subfolder, you've got your actors and, and all your information. So that's the, uh, that's the file naming that I like to use, file structure I like to use. I like to use subfolders just in case I ever use this sort of function, the export function. It keeps everything nice, neat, and tidy. Now, I suppose you're thinking, how do we actually use that in Kodi? So, let's go back to Kodi. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely wipe out my library. Um, let's do videos, files, right, movies. I'm going to remove that source. Yes. And yes, I want to delete everything from the library. So it's going to completely wipe this clean. It may take some time, so I'm just going to pause that. And I'm going to do it with um, all of the others as well, the TV folders and everything. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, that's that bit done. As you can see here, we've got no movies or TV show uh, sections. It's been completely nuked, the library. So if I go into the files section, I'm basically back as a vanilla build. There's nothing there. Um, there's nothing in the database at all, no thumbnails, anything. Right, now, let's add some videos. So if I go to browse, and I want to go to H, Let's try my movies. Do you know what? I'm going to try my, my bigger folder, which is the test files. I'm going to go with that movies one that had absolutely loads in. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to change that to movies and local information only. Now, what we should find is this scrapes in much much quicker than when you're scraping online. Um, scraping online took absolutely hours for those uh, thousands so uh, let's click on OK and see what happens. Do you want to refresh? Yes. So you can see top right corner there it's scanning in really quickly um, and if we come out we should now see that the movies section is populating with all the correct results that we had before um, and I'd set up, um, by the way, I'd set up a scraper properly so I'd, I'd set up the universal scraper because I wanted um, I wanted to pull MPAA ratings from UK and that was the only one that seemed to be doing it um, so I set that up to use IMDB so let's see if it's also included things like MPAA ratings uh, yes it has, rated 18, got all the information there, you can click on cast Got all the cast there. Um, yeah, perfect, absolutely perfect. So, um, so that's one. That's uh, that's a good way of doing it. To be honest, if you've got multiple devices, um, then you can obviously um, they can scrape that source as well. So uh, they don't have to search online. That they will if you set it to local information, they will search that particular um, location for you. And, um, and it doesn't matter if movie scrapers and things like that are offline which uh, they do happen to be from time to time um, it will just grab the local information and you're good as gold uh, well I hope that's helped 
I know it can be a little confusing, but hopefully that's that's simplified things a little bit. Um, one thing you may be interested in is um, rather than doing it this way. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this way, and it's um, it's the sort of original way of doing things. But there are now newer services you can use. So one such service is Tract Tract TV T R A K T, and um, that will allow you to um, keep track. It will synchronise every time you watch anything. Uh, it will synchronise online um, and keep an online list of what you've watched, and you can import that. Um, with a brilliant um, Cody add-on and I'll go into that in another video but uh, but that may be something that you want to uh, look into if you're looking to synchronize your um, your libraries and uh, have an online backup okay thanks for watching and if you have any questions um, feel free to pop over to totalxbmc.tv and uh, post up on the forum or have a good look around in the tutorials portal and we'll be uh, more than happy to try and help out where we can Hopefully see you soon. Thank you.